kiss today goodbye and point me toward tomorrow. We did what we had to do. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Columbus Concerns, a public affairs presentation of North American Broadcasting. I'm Mark News. Thanks so much for joining us today. This week we had a chance to talk to Terry Blair Hamlish. For 23 years, the Columbus native was married to the renowned composer Marvin Hamlish until his untimely death in 2012. A special concert remembering Marvin Hamlish and his music is coming up with the New Albany Symphony Orchestra. So we talked this week on Columbus Concerns to Terry Blair Hamlish. Uh, first of all, uh, tell us a little bit about the origins of the concert coming up from the New Albany Symphony Orchestra. It's going to be uh, coming up in uh, October, October 3rd at 8 p.m., another performance October 4th at 3 p.m. at the McCoy Community Center for the Arts. Uh, tell us about the origins of that. Absolutely. There is a concert Saturday, October 3rd at 8 o'clock, and there's another concert Sunday, October 4th at 3 p.m. And we want everyone to come, and here's the reason why. There'll never be another concert like this again. We are transporting world-class talent. For instance, Peter Dugan. He is a, a world-renowned, world-class pianist. Everywhere Peter plays, there's standing ovations, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's something you'll never see again. He opened the New World Symphony with Michael Tilson Thomas this year. The violinist Charles Yang, the Boston Globe, calls the uh, Mick Jagger of violinist. He is a performer that I have never heard the way we were played like this, ever. And these, these performers have such high quality and they're people that you would never see on a stage together or perform again. So it's, a, it's a, like it's a lifetime experience, and we're bringing it to the New Albany Symphony, thanks to Heather Garner and all these fabulous musicians. It's being conducted by Jay Ernest Green, who was Marvin's associate conductor at the National Symphony Orchestra at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., for over 11 and a half years. Marissa McGowan is singing, and she was the star... Well, she was the star of Nutty Professor, which was Marvin's last musical he wrote before he died. But she was also the star on Broadway of Little Night Music with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Angela Lansbury. And then there's Valerie Lemon, which, of course, is the hometown sweetheart. And she was Marvin's soprano singer for over a dozen years in symphonies all over the country and all over the world. And she's fabulous. She's from Ohio. And her mother, I believe, owned the Dell restaurant and hosted all the Kinley players and has great roots to Ohio. And then there's Rocky Patera. And Marvin discovered Rocky in Pittsburgh with a Pittsburgh symphony as a, as a young boy. Um, I think he had him sing a song, Thank Heaven for Little Girls. And, uh, and Rocky's going to sing. So this kind of talent assembled on one stage, and I'm not given the superlatives, is phenomenal. And this is the only time that people will get to hear this, and the tickets are like $15. They range from like $15 to $36. So it's something that I believe that people, they, they will walk out and say, I've never seen anything like it. Um, Peter Dugan and uh, Charles uh, just played in New York um, for me at something at the Hudson Theater, and people were so blown away. They, they just, they, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe what they were watching. And I'm not exaggerating this, so we really, really want people to come. And I think there's a champagne um, toast with Marvin's favorite ice cream, which was an Ohio ice cream called Grater's. And his favorite flavor was black raspberry chip. And I think all guests are invited afterwards for the champagne toast to Marvin's favorite ice cream. And I think they can go to Ticketmaster.com for tickets, or they can call 614-469-0930. 
639. It's like 614-469-0939 for tickets. But when you have a ticket for only $15 and you're getting this kind of world-class talent, it would seem to me that people wouldn't want to miss it. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. And they can also buy the uh, four-pack for the entire New Albany Symphony season, and this would be included in that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so great and way not only that to, to go see a fantastic concert, but to support the New Albany Symphony. And, and we want everyone, and Marvin would want everyone to, to support the New Albany Symphony. And I think that getting more people there, and it's just, I can't express enough, this is a one-of-a-kind concert. It would be similar to, um, you know, somebody singing that hadn't sung in a long time, a big name, and you were only going to be able to see them sing once. This is the kind of music and the kind of quality of music that's going to be on that stage, and it's highly entertaining. I mean, it's riveting, it's emotional. Uh, people don't walk out of this concert um, indifferent at all. And I also want to thank, if she's listening, uh, Carol Looper and her husband Fred, um, former Channel 6 TV personality, for all that they're doing, because I know that they're, they're working very hard on this as well. Talk a little bit about some of the musical selections that people will hear and recognize. I think that, of course, a chorus line, um, which won the Pulitzer Prize, and um, sort of changed American theater. Um, they're going to hear a huge selection from a chorus line. And uh, they'll hear at the ballet. And I think there's a surprise that Ernie has up his sleeve for that. I believe there's going to be a slideshow of, of photos and things that people will never see that are actually were given after Marvin died to the Library of Congress. So they're going to see, they're going to see inside photos of his life, and and no one has ever really seen those. So that's there. Um, they will hear um, the way we were. Um, Marissa McGowan um, sings the way we were. And Charles Jing on violin plays it, and it's quite stunning. So they will hear, um, you know, all kinds of things from his movies and from his Broadway shows. They'll also hear some exquisite excerpts from a musical he did called Sweet Smell of Success that's returning to Broadway. And there is a song it's very tough for me to get through. There's actually two songs on this that are my hardest songs to get through, which is um, Marvin wrote a song at the end of his life that he asked his lyricist, Rupert Holmes, to write with him for Nutty Professor the Musical. And it, he wrote this song called While I Still Have the Time. And given the fact that his life was suddenly cut short, while I still have the time, is very beautiful. And Marissa McGowan will be singing that because she was the star of Nutty Professor. And there's another one called That's How I Say Goodbye. And uh, Kelly O'Hara sang it in the original. She also sang it at Lincoln Center for Marvin's tribute on New Year's Eve with the New York Philharmonic. And it's uh, That's How I Say Goodbye. Those are, those are the two hardest songs for me to get through. Um, but there's there's many, many, many selections of chorus line, the way we were, nobody does it better. Um, and it's 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 really I this concert is is so special that Ernie Green has worked so hard on this. And these performers, you know, are are flying in to do this out of also their love for Marvin. And also we want to support Heather Garner in the new new Albany Symphony. And Marvin would want to support that as well because Marvin was always a musician's musician and he always had the back of his musicians. And it was always about the music and it was never about him. He, he was so famous everywhere in the world, uh, so many famous scores, so many awards that he won. Yet uh, there seems to be, uh, not only because you're from Central Ohio, but there seemed to be this real love affair between uh, the people of Central Ohio and Marvin Hamlish, and a lot of it, I think, had to do with the fact that he spent time here, gave his talents here. Uh, talk a little bit about that relationship. He did. Um, he, first of all, he loved family, and he loved Columbus. You, you, you're making me have tears in my eyes here. He um, thought of Columbus as a home. My mother um, still lives in Columbus, and my sister and my nieces, my sister teaches in Dublin, and my nieces go to school there, and Marvin loved them with all his heart. And whenever he came home, it was Columbus. And when the Columbus Symphony actually had problems, they called him, and he came in to help them. He helped a lot of symphonies regain their equilibrium after they had financial issues. And he gave them his time. He did it for free. And he would never say that, or he would never tell people that. But he was um, so generous 
And he did that with Columbus. And recently, there was the art exhibit, Remembering Marvin Hamlish, with photographs by Lynn Prince at the Columbus Museum of Art. And I was very happy to be there and see the love of Columbus to Marvin because he had that same love right back at them. And it, it, the de- there's it's deep roots. That's why this concert is so important because we're remembering Marvin in a place that he considered home. And we want people to actually hear his music and hear what we believe he would want them to hear. Uh, you, you talked about the photographs. Uh, there's a book, right? Yes, there is a book. Uh, there is a book. Uh, it's being sold in um, the Columbus Museum of Art gift shop, and it has the, the photographs in it. It's quite stunning, I have to say. He, it took him three years to put this exhibit together, and he uh, followed all these tributes from the time that Barbara Streisand, right after Marvin died, said she wanted to sing for him. So there was a Barbara Streisand uh, memorial at Juilliard with Aretha Franklin and Liza Minnelli, and actually, Peter Dugan played in that. He played for uh, Isaac Perlman. And um, these group of musicians that are obviously world-renowned and the best of the best did this for Marvin, and Lynn captured this on film. And then uh, we went back, and you could actually have walked around the museum with your cell phones, and you could hear, they were talking pictures, much like Harry Potter. And you could hear uh, Barbara Streisand telling the story of Marvin, or Liza telling her story of Marvin, or Aretha telling her story of Marvin. And you see all the people, including John Simpkins, who is the director of Sweet Smell of Success. He's from Ohio. <laughs> and, um, you know, all, it, Ohio, to me, I'm so proud to be from Ohio. I mean, I couldn't be prouder. When people ask me, to this day, I think that I'm still that Central Ohio girl. And people always say to me within maybe two hours of meeting me, they'll go, you're from the Midwest. So I'm, I don't think that I've changed much. I hope I've grown a lot. But my roots and my love for Ohio were shared with Marvin. And so this is really special for us. This, is, this concert means a lot. And I really, really want people to turn out for it. And with these tickets being the $15 to the $36, they've made it affordable for everyone. And Marvin would be really proud of that because Broadway is not that, and it used to upset them all the time. Uh, tell us about the website. I was on the website, uh, MarvinHamlish.us. Uh, that, that, that is full of uh, great information and uh, a lot of fun. It is, actually. I'm so glad you went on it. Um, it's true. Marvin Hamlish has a website and a Facebook page. And what happened was he put that up right before he died. And at the moment he died, there were 8 million hits all over the world. And parts of France and Paris, uh, they only played Marvin music, you know, for the whole day in Japan. And, and so what happened is um, a great friend and colleague of Marvin's, Pablo, runs that website, and he does a brilliant job. And he kept it up. And it still, it still has, to this day, it still has, like, something like 300,000 hits a month. And so it's, it's alive. You know, we were thinking, okay, well, you know, he died, and, but it's that that website is alive. I mean, people are get, people are getting jobs, musical jobs off it. People have a place to go, and um, and they're continually. I know that they're playing our song in Westport, Connecticut, is opening tomorrow night at their playhouse. Uh, a chorus line is re-releasing uh, the original musical CD, and so it has a place for people all over the world to go on. And his music stays alive. Thank goodness, and his legacy through that. And it is interesting. I agree with you. I think that um, it's always something on there. There's always something new. There's always, it's, it's never dull, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, one more time, tell us uh, when and where, where's the concert, and how can people get tickets, and uh, it's going to be a couple of special nights. Oh, these concerts are going to be unbelievable. It's world-class ta- talent flying in from New York, and our hometown girl, Valerie Women, but people will not believe it when they see it. And I defy anyone that can come up to me at the concert and look for Terry Blair Hamlish and say, I need it, because they will love it. So it will change, it will really change the way they feel. And the concerts are Saturday, October 3rd at 8 p.m. and Sunday, October 4th at 3 p.m. at the McCoy Center in New Albany, Ohio. And it's the New Albany Symphony, and they're remembering Marvin Hamlish. And I just want everybody to come. I want people to buy tickets and come. I'll be there. Um, they can call 614-469-0939. Uh, 
or go to www.ticketmaster.com. And the tickets range from $15 to 36 and I think they should support the New Albany Symphony, and also I think that they should remember Marvin and his love for Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we were so pleased to talk this week on Columbus Concerns with Terry Blair Hamlish. Oh, 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 oh.